Ada Lovelace was born in 1815 to Lord and Lady Byron. And if you know poetry, yes, that Lord Byron. She's his only legitimate daughter. Growing up, Ada dedicated herself to her studies and became a talented mathematician, corresponding with leading scientists such as Faraday of electromagnetism fame, Brewster of stereoscopic camera and kaleidoscope fame, and most importantly, Charles Babbage, who was the inventor of the analytic engine, which is the first general purpose computer ever created. Fascinated by the analytic engine, Ada translated texts about the analytic engine from other languages. Ada included her own thoughts on the text as part of the footnotes of her translations, and she saw the potential for the analytic engine and wrote what is thought the first algorithm for the analytic engine and any computer for that matter as part of her thoughts in the footnotes of the translations. Ada is thus considered by many to be the first computer programmer, and she is an inspiration to many, including myself, as I am also a programmer myself. I pulled on her as my source of inspiration for a lot of my career and a lot of what I do, but I also used this portrait of her on the way to a ball in 1840 as inspiration for my own 1840s ball gown. This will be the inspiration for my next series of projects. I'm attending a ball set in the early Victorian era, so I knew that I had to make an outfit inspired by Ada Lovelace. I will be sewing many pieces, as you see here, knitting, crocheting. I have a lot of projects and pieces planned in order for this entire ensemble to come together. Okay, we are at my sketching desk and I did change out of my outfit, but I wanted to show you what my inspirations were and what my ideas were and um, kind of sketch for you all of the items that I have already sewn and some of the things that I still have planned on doing for this outfit and this entire ensemble before we head out for the ball. I'm very excited. So uh, I have my sketch pad down here so I'm going to point you that way and we're going to go ahead and talk through all the pieces for this entire series. <laughs> okay so the first outfit that we're going to talk about is the gown. I will pop on the screen again the portrait of Ada Lovelace that I'm using as my inspiration and a portrait of her on the way to the ball. She's wearing a lavender dress which you can kind of tell from the illustration. It looks like it has maybe it is potentially a shot silk and I ordered a shot silk so I think that that will hopefully match really nicely. The other thing is is that she is only shown from the side so you don't see the front of her gown at all. So first let me go ahead and sketch out like the general silhouette that I'm going for but as I'm sketching and you can kind of see a time lapse of me sketching I'll also maybe pop up some uh, fashion plates that I use as inspiration. This kind of lavender violet purple color was pretty popular in the 1840s and uh, we have a lot of like pointed bodices and pointed necklines with like Berthas and I picked out a few gowns that were um, like source of real inspiration so I'm, I'm very excited about this. Okay so we are done with it. I mean this is again a really really rough sketch of my idea. <laughs> I went real quick with this one. From the inspiration picture it's definitely I, I mean a lot of the ball gowns of the time or the evening gowns of the time were very low and off the shoulder so I'm definitely gonna go for that look. I found an 1840s ball gown that had this beautiful applied Bertha and the pattern that I'll be using to sew and make this dress is a laughing moon mercantile pattern which I'll also pop up and one of the views she has is a a wonderful one with an applied Bertha that I think I'm going to use uh, to make my pattern. I will also like these are supposed to be boning lines. There's going to be boning in the front and I'm trying to make it like one of those pointed fronts from the 1940s. These are supposed to be the knife pleats at the front of the skirts. I saw another dress that had these beautiful knife pleats in the front that I really enjoyed so I want to have that and a lot of that fullness in the rest of the dress. So this is like the key piece that I'm basing this all around and the reason that I'm making all of this ensemble because well I'm going to a ball so I need a ball count right? That's definitely one of the pieces that I'll be making and will be seeing and walking through as I make it. The other thing that I haven't really sketched here but you can kind of see it in the picture is hair pieces. So I want to make hair pieces. I didn't sketch them here but I do want to make the hair pieces that match and hair decoration especially for the evening was very common in the 1840s so I'm excited to make some matching hair pieces. Speaking 
Speaking of the hair, I feel like one of the things that really sticks out about Ada on this portrait is her hairstyle. Uh, so it looks like she's wearing two really big buns at the side of her head. It almost looks like Princess Leia buns. And I was really scratching my head trying to figure out how to do this hairstyle. But I found a few portraits of women from I believe the 1840s time frame that I think explain the hairstyle a little bit better. What you might notice in a lot of these pictures, this thing that is the same is that the middle part followed by curls that are curled very sharply towards the front of your face so that it frames your face near your ears were very common. And that to me looked really, really similar to kind of what the portrait interpretation of that hairstyle might be. And that's actually what I tried in the intro of this video. And I think it turned out pretty similar, although I might have to make bigger, bigger rolls on the side of my face if I want to fully match the portrait. And then on top of that, I want to make hair pieces is for the daytime. So that's the next thing that we're going to talk about. I'll go to a new page and we are going to, oh, Nutella, are you turning the page for me? Nutella, you can, what, what's here? Yeah, you helping me? So I use this to help me draw. Woo, careful girly. I use this to help me draw my figure. So I'm gonna first sketch out my, <laughs> I'm gonna first sketch out the figure and then I will draw it. So the next thing that we're gonna go do is the daytime dress. And the reason for that is that we do have um, some corresponding daytime events that we signed up for along with the ball. So. Okay, so here is the day dress. I have chosen a Laughing Moon Mercantile pattern for this one. And I have also found a lot of illustrations and or like fashion plates as well as photos from the 1840s that has very similar style lines to this dress. Since it's a daytime look and we'll probably sometimes be walking around places, I would also really like to have a bonnet. I'm gonna try to make a bonnet. So there'll be probably an entire video on like the hair pieces from the evening gown hair to the daytime bonnets and potentially like a daytime cap and things like that. One of the main things that you'll notice is that this one also has a huge skirt. We will be traveling from the US to the UK for this event. So uh, packing space is very limited and this skirt has about four yards of material in it. So um, what I did find and talking with Claude from Retro Claude is that sometimes what people would do is from the same material, a lot of times silk, they would make one skirt because that had the majority of the fabric, right? And then you'd make multiple bodices. And I actually found sets for sale on Etsy that were just like a four piece set. So you had one skirt, an evening bodice, a day bodice, and a jacket, or a, a, like a little silk purse made from the same material. So I thought that was really cute. And so kind of would have also been done at the time as well as safe and like, space and material savings. I'm pleased with that. And I think that this one hopefully won't be quite as complicated as the evening gown. I am after all engineering knits, which means that I do enjoy sewing, but I picked it up originally as an accompaniment to the knitting projects, the historical knitting projects I was attempting to do a few years ago. So I want this sewing to be kind of like the base layer to the rest of the accessories that I'm hoping to include some of those fiber crafts on. So the biggest next thing that I want to talk about is going to be an accompaniment to my daytime wear and that will be a polka. <laughs> I originally didn't know what a polka was or I think they sometimes call it a Polish police. The only thing that I know about is the polka dance. In the late 1830s and early 1840s, the polka was a type of jacket that made its way into knitting patterns. And so this is one of the earliest quote unquote sweater patterns that you could potentially find for women in particular at the time. It's more of like a cardigan, but I'm super excited to knit it. I mean, I kind of want to go back as far back as I can with my knitting patterns. And I have, I, you've heard about it in my other dream projects with my 1655 project that I want to do too. But so here is the picture of the 
pattern. I also found photos of women at the time wearing something that looks incredibly similar. So this is something that not only people would make and wear, but would be proud enough to have their photograph taken wearing it. So I think that's pretty neat. I'm going to be purchasing, I'm going to be either reusing or purchasing the majority of my undergarments for this. However, I do want to create myself a new pair of stockings. I did knit a pair of cotton stockings in the past, but I want a pair that goes a little bit higher up on my legs so that I can use uh, garters to attach them from my legs to my waist. And that way they can hopefully stay up and stay on a little bit easier, especially when I'm going to be dancing. So I'm planning on using my knitting machines for that because knitting machines at the time would have been really popular for making knitted stockings. Of course, hand knitting as well, but uh, we gotta keep time in mind and my wrist strength. <laughs> and my wrist durability. Next project is going to be the purse. So I am hoping, like I spoke about before, when you have a skirt, sometimes you'll have like a skirt and then an evening bodice and a day bodice and maybe a cape or a jacket or a little purse. And so I'm hoping out of the same silk material to make a little silk purse for me to carry around. But stretch goal would be to create a crochet purse instead. I have, I think one of my most uh, precious book purchases, acquisitions that I've made in the last few years. And it is the ladies knitting, netting and crochet book by Jane Gauguin, Gauguin, Gauguin. <laughs> Let me know how you would pronounce it. And it it has not only the polka pattern in it that I will be knitting, although it's not, it's not her polka book. So she's the same author that wrote the polka book from which I'm knitting the polka. But uh, this has many, many more patterns, including a lot of crocheting patterns for purses that I would like to, to make because that book is really special. It has hand colored in charts. Like she is revolutionary when it comes to writing up knitting and crocheting and netting patterns because unlike anyone before her, she created charts, diagrams, and terminology and listed out exactly what the terminology was. She still was missing gauge <laughs> that I guess comes later, but she was really revolutionary in writing very easy and well to like easy to understand patterns that even a hundred years later in the 1940s, they still didn't have color work charts, whereas uh, she created the color work charts for her patterns earlier on, which is just, I mean, it's so cool. We'll go into more detail on that book and her as an author a little bit later, like in that video, in the Polka video. So I just, I wanna let you know that those are the things that are coming. And then actually now that I'm, as I'm looking at it, I'm sorry, this is a little bit out of order, but I, I hope it's it's kind of what's coming into my mind. I am actually, as I'm filming this, I'm just a few days out from flying out for the event. So I am, I am tired, <laughs> but I'm so excited. But it is also one of the reasons why I grabbed uh, this volume as well. This is a bound book from 1846 of magazines of the time. I've gone through this book in the past, I think in the last year, maybe a little bit more, where I've gone through certain months of magazines. Usually what would happen is someone would subscribe to a magazine for the year. They would collect all the copies and then have them bound into a book. I have a few of these from a few different years from the 1840s, 50s, and 60s, but the 1840s, I was hoping to buy this one to get a little bit better idea from the early 1840s to mid 1840s for fashion plates for the ball that we're going to. But it turns out that whoever had this bound in 1846 just had a real fun sense of what to include. So it says Graham's Magazine, but it is actually mostly a magazine that I don't recognize. The Columbian Magazine, as well as a lot of Godey's Ladies books, which is like one of the most popular ladies magazines of the 1840s uh, from 1842, which is actually almost exactly the year that I'm interested in. So here's a lovely one from 1839. We have some beautiful browns and greens. And I feel like you can, at least I can tell it's a little bit more 1839. It's hard for me to show you because it's bound so tightly into the uh, binding of the book, but the bonnets have a very high crown and they're very round in the front, which is a very late 1830s 
style and is a lot of the style of what I'm going for. So you can see the low shoulders, the Berthas, the short sleeves. Sometimes you get little uh, evening caps, but most of the times you get a lot of flowers, sometimes beads, vines, ribbons, feathers adorning the hair. The pointed bodices is really what I'm looking for. And here you can see the evening gloves are actually quite short. Later on in the Victorian era, I believe, they grew in length towards the elbow, but I was surprised to find that earlier on in the 1840s, you really only had like slightly past wrist length. I also really like all the decorations on the skirts. I don't think that I'm gonna be doing any decoration on the skirts. I just don't know that I'll have the time to be honest. So here's another one where this dress is colored in and then whoever was coloring this in picked up a few accents in the hair and just lightly shaded this in pink, which I think is so beautiful. So one other quick tip if you're not as familiar with the 1840s, but you can tell that these are evening gowns just by the low necklines. You can see most of the shoulders showing hairstyle sometimes you can tell. This one looks much more like a daytime wear. She has long sleeves, evening wear is usually not past the elbow. Higher necklines like I said as well as sometimes you have a little bit more covering on the hair and the head. Daytime looks it looks like or at least like wearing it out onto the street looks. Yeah because we all have long sleeves on. We have a lot of bonnets on so this I took a lot of inspiration from these bonnets in here on how I want to style my bonnet. Although I have to say I love the range of these blues. I have this blue is so, some of my favorite hues and shades of blue and this reminds me a lot of the day gown that I'm looking to make. Not the skirt but the top with these little over sleeves. Although my top has some buttons going down the front. This one is not colored in. I'm not sure why. It's from April 1842. We have all daytime wear except for one it looks like. She's got lower neckline and short sleeves. You can see a bonnet that's really adorned with a lot of flowers along the back which I think is really pretty and I kind of I want to do ribbons for sure, maybe flowers on top, and you can kind of see here it looks like she has a lacy collar on. If I have time, I would like to crochet a lacy collar for myself for my daytime gown. A lot more daytime wear looks. Sometimes something that you'll get a lot with these is that not only is the outside of the bonnet decorated, but so is the inside. Can you kind of see that right here and right there you have some greenery poking out that's not actually in her hair. That's attached to the bonnet and you can see that on a few extant bonnets is that the detailing and the trimming on the inside is also still there. And something that you'll notice a lot with a lot of these 1840s styles is that you have very rounded shoulders. The round shoulder look was very in as well as super dropped sleeves. As I've been sewing and working on this, I really had to change my posture as I have been trying on the outfits or else they really don't fit comfortably at all. <laughs> because uh, your shoulders have to be so far back for the armholes to fit in a way that feels comfortable. Other bit that you might see often is kind of these gathered bits to the front. This one is actually a little bit more of a rounded front and this looks very similar to another gown that I'm making. Here's another beautiful set. I love these accessories. They are all netted. I would love to learn netting, as you all know. It would have been really cool to be able to make those accessories. This blue color and this hair piece in particular, I also used uh, as an inspiration for a day cap that I made. So as I was saying, the gowns that I sketched are not the only gowns that I'm making. So I use this as an inspiration, as well as uh, this dress color and this hair piece. I'm not going to the ball by myself. I am taking someone else with me my mom and I'm super excited, but I, I will be constructing most of her pieces for her as well. So I have a lot of sewing ahead of me. So I have uh, my skirt, my day bodice, my evening bodice, my mom's skirt, her day bodice, her evening bodice. I have two bonnets, at least one day cap for my mom. I might make myself a day cap. I might potentially also be making some chemisettes. Uh, my mom prefers tops that have higher necklines. In the 1840s, necklines dropped really low, especially for the evening wear, but it was seen in a few fashion plates that some women would be wearing chemisettes underneath. And so I might be making her some of those as well, but those are pretty simple in construction. I am going to be knitting myself a polka. <laughs> Super exciting. I would also like to knit myself a shawl to kind of imitate that head 
uh, lace that Ada Lovelace is wearing. I'm not sure if we'll get there or not. <laughs> I would like to crochet myself a collar, but I, I don't know if we'll get, again, I don't know if we'll get there. Then definitely uh, the evening hair pieces, like of the millinery flowers and the ribbon, and then trying to figure out the hairstyle, because Ada Lovelace has a very distinctive hairstyle in her portrait. I don't know that I will be wearing that to the ball, but I would like to at least figure it out because I want to be, I want to have a photograph taken that kind of imitates the portrait that was painted of Ada Lovelace. So, oh right, and then I want to crochet two purses and knit two pairs of stockings. So we have mm, quite a bit of projects coming up. But I hope that this makes you excited to see me working on all of these pieces. We're going back to the Victorian era, the early Victorian era this time, and we're gonna be exploring some different styles and designs that I've never really looked at before. And what's really fun and what I find really exciting is kind of the crafts of that time because it's a time where the pattern books about knitting and crocheting really became very popular and we get some really fundamental books that come out that really define a lot of uh, Victorian knitting manu manuals and the style of knitting manuals going forward. So I'm very excited to look at those and work through those and see what we come up with that. So. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this makes you really excited for everything that I have planned and I hope that you will subscribe to continue watching me as I make this entire series of things for my ensemble and also my mom's ensemble. So thank you for watching and I will see you again really really soon. Probably first things first to sew my evening gown.